Hi, I'm Javis Lewis and in this video I'm going to talk you through some of the render settings in Dash Studio 4.9 uh, using NVIDIA iRace Render Engine. Let's jump right into Dash Studio. I've got the same scene as before, just one Genesis 3 female character by Rhiannon. And I've got a couple of cameras here. Camera 2 is a slightly closer shot, camera 1 is a slightly wider shot. I'm using the photo reel rendering mode to, in my interactive render settings here. Photo reel, that's why it takes a little bit longer. And let's have a look under render settings here. See what we can do. There's a myriad of options. Most of them have stayed the same compared to 3D Light. If you're familiar with those, you don't need to learn that much new stuff. But I'll talk you through the basics here anyway. So let's start with a general tab. Uh, whenever we can, we see a disclosure triangle here, we can open that. And then with the top thing, we see all these options. But with these, we only see a subset of these options to make it easy on our tired eyes. So let's start with dimensions. That's the render dimensions here and the aspect ratio. You can create your own presets and then hit save. Or you can pick any of the presets that are available here. So I like to use a 4x3 portrait aspect ratio here. And if you switch the constraint proportions on, then if you want a higher resolution, the proportions will stay the same. So if I were to double this, if I were to double the height, the width is automatically calculated according to this aspect ratio. But if I switch this off, then I can type in any old number that I want and the aspect ratio kind of changes inside the scene. By the way, this white outline here, that is called the production frame. And that shows me what actually ends up on the render. I don't think that's on by default. So in case you're wondering where the hell is that in Dash Studio, it's uh, in this viewport. In fact, in any viewport here or in the auxiliary viewport. And you can uh, head over to this little context menu and select show aspect frame. And if you don't do that, then it completely goes away. I like to leave it on because I do like to see what is actually being rendered on my scene and I'm going to pick maybe my iPad portrait resolution and make it a little bit smaller here, half it in size, there we go. Destination is fairly self-explanatory as well, it will either render a still image or an image series or a movie, though the latter two are only applicable if you have an animation in your scene. Still image just renders the current image, so it will always render a still image. Image series will render, say you had an animation of 100 frames, it will render 100 frames exactly. And you can then add them together in either a video editor or another application. Whereas movie will actually stitch them all these single frames together and create an AVI or a QuickTime file for you to watch or upload to YouTube instantly. This is sometimes not the best idea because post-production with movie files is more difficult than with image series. So if you had a transparent background in your animation and you wanted to add something else to it, it's much easier to do it with an image series than with a movie. Because with a movie, an alpha channel is not always saved, only with a QuickTime format and only with a specific format there. You can ask Dash Studio to render your image into a new window or directly to a file. If you do that, then you won't see the render progressing. New window means Dash Studio will just render the image, but it won't actually save it. It will kind of save it in a, in a special temporary folder. So in case Dash Studio has finished rendering and your computer crashes or somebody pulls the power cord, that render isn't quite lost forever. It is in a temporary folder. There's an article on my website that explains where to find that magic folder. You can give your image a title already and you can give it an image path where to save it. But you can also do that as soon as the render is finished. Under the miscellaneous tab, we find what Dash Studio is supposed to do with auto headlamp features. I've talked about that in a previous video. The idea is that cameras always have something like a tiny spotlight strapped to them, and that's called the headlamp. And that is something that illuminates the scene from where we're looking so that we can see something just in case we don't have any scene lights. Now, in my case, I do have scene lights. I do have two spotlights. And this setting says, when no scene lights, then please switch the auto headlamp on. So if I wouldn't have these, then my camera would be rendered with a headlamp on. But I can also change that to never because the headlamp doesn't really exist as such. And it's kind of an artificial lighting that we don't have much control over. So we can always switch this to off. In my case, it won't be rendered because I do have scene lights, but in case you don't have scene lights, make sure you switch this off unless you like the effect of the headlamp. 
post-process script, in case you're familiar with Dash Studio scripting, you can launch a script after your render is finished. Under render mode, we only have one single option, and that is, do we want to render our final image using the photo reel or the interactive rendering engine? I mentioned this in a previous video there when we were talking about performance settings. The photo reel renderer gives the better results, but takes a little bit longer, whereas the interactive renderer is also an iRay render, it's just a different mode that may take a little bit less time to render, but it won't render all the effects. It's still an unbiased renderer, but some of the effects like the skin won't look as realistic as on the photo real renderer. Technically, NVIDIA iRay has a third rendering mode, which is called real time, but Dash Studio have not implemented that. Under progressive rendering, we can see something like update and completion. Let's talk about these two. Update means if I were to launch my render now, then the picture updates in certain intervals. In my case, that is, oops, let me bring that back. In my case, that is every five seconds, this picture is updated with the latest rendering results here. We can also set the minimum number of samples that must have been cast for the update to happen. Under completion, we find some interesting options. iRay, like other unbiased rendering engines, will technically render an image forever until we tell it to stop. So Lux render, for example, will never stop unless you set a timeout or unless you stop the render manually. But in iRay, they've implemented two, well, kind of if-when clauses, and they're governed here by maximum time and rendering quality. And let me explain these two things. Maximum time means that the default is 7,200 seconds, which is two hours, that after this time, the render will stop, no matter what it looks like. Now, some renders may be finished beforehand and look still look good. Other renders may take another two hours to finish. So if your render stops after two hours and you think, hey, that still looks grainy, crank this value up into something higher. The largest you can set it is 259,200, and that is six months. So after six months, your render will definitely finish. Well, your computer may just finish before that. I'll leave mine on the default for now. But this time limit will only be reached if the rendering quality is not enabled. So these are, these are three parameters here. Rendering quality is enabled by default, and it's set to one here. And it also works together with something called the rendering converged ratio. Now, this is a bit of a weird terminology here, but it, in technical terms, it kind of means how much of the image has been put together properly. This is, this is very relative and very subjective because even with 100%, you may still get grain in your image after 100% and the quality of one is reached. You can also crank up the quality and therefore the render will take longer, but it's no guarantee for all the grain to disappear. So this is something that needs to be played around with on a per image basis. With the defaults, the image kind of renders until iRay believes the convergence is now reached 95% or over and the quality is good enough. But if in your opinion that is not the case, then set these values to something higher. A third timeout you can set is the maximum number of samples set. You say, okay, two hours is enough. If by that time 5,000 samples have been cast, say after an hour and a half, then the rendering will also finish. So these, were, these values, they all work together. So either 5,000 rays have been cast or two hours have been reached. Either of these things happens first, that's when the render will stop. Something to play around with much like all the other parameters down here under alpha, optimization, filtering, and so forth. We've already talked about the environment here in a previous video, and we're going to talk about tone mapping in another video. If you find you don't want to wait too long for a relatively small image to render without grain, you can always crank up the dimensions and then live with the grain and then resize the image in an image editor, and then therefore the grain will disappear. So you can basically over render which doesn't take that much longer than a smaller render and then if you shrink the image down then most of the grain will disappear that's another trick you can employ one small tip about render performance i've noticed that when one of my viewports is switched to nvidia iray either the main viewport or the auxiliary viewport here and i then start a render it happens to start a lot faster 
than when I'm coming from the texture shaded viewport. You see, this is now, I uh, can see an image already after about 8 to 10 seconds. And that is because this first render pass takes a long time for iRay to complete. Now, if I were to stop this render and I set this viewport to texture shaded and then start my render, then you'll see it takes iRay a lot longer to produce a picture. And that is because that first render pass just takes an awful long time. And luckily the engine has been modified into something where the preview first draw can be added kind of to the real render and therefore I can see an image much faster. See we've been 20 odd seconds in now and we don't still don't see an image so the first render draw hasn't even happened yet. And now after 37 seconds, 38 seconds, we are at the point where we were after just 8 seconds when the one of the viewports was switched to iRay. So that's my advice. If you're working in iRay and you want to do a quick render and see the results, then make sure one of your viewports is set to iRay already. Then you're saving yourself a bit of time there for the real render. That was it. I hope this was helpful. In the next video, we're going to talk about something called tone mapping. That's also found under rendering settings. So stay tuned for that. Mm -hmm.